Every madman has a hook, sometimes literally. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and in this installment of Versus, we're pitting Michael Myers against Jason Voorhees. For this video, we'll be looking at two of the most iconic slasher villains to ever grace the big screen to determine whether it's the masked machete-wielding maniac or the masked chef's knife-wielding maniac who reigns supreme. Let's get started. Round number one. Origins. Slasher villains of the 1980s, the height of the genre, always came prepackaged with an origin story. This would usually give them some sort of motive for hacking away at libidinous teens. Come, dear. It will be easier for you than it was for Jason. And you have to give the original Friday the 13th some credit for its unexpected twist, that it was the drowned Jason's loony, overprotective mother doing the slashing. By part two, however, the supposedly deceased Jason takes center stage in the franchise, avenging both his drowning and his mother's death. That's a good boy. Good, good Jason. Basically, he's an overgrown man-child with mommy issues. This is where Halloween really stands out, as even though we witnessed Michael's first heinous act, through his own eyes no less, we're never really given a reason. Michael? His nemesis, Dr. Loomis, gives several monologues about how Michael is the living embodiment of evil, but no motive is ever offered. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left, no reason. No uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of good or evil. While some of the sequels attempted and failed at some backstory, even linking Laurie Strode to the villain, the recent sequel boot and its upcoming follow-ups are going to back those roots, the ones that can go anywhere without logic or understanding. While Jason has a clearer motivation, the mystery surrounding Michael is what makes him so fascinating. There was nobody outside. There was. What do you look like? The Boogeyman. He grabs our attention from the film's horrifying opening scene, securing Michael's victory for this round. Round two, enemies. Every Moby Dick needs their Captain Ahab, and slashers are no exception. Remember me, Jason? Jason, don't you remember? But who could possibly stand up to such a leviathan? A walking, hulking wrecking ball seemingly undeterred by bullets, car crashes, or even explosions. Run, Tommy, run! For Jason, the answer is different in almost every entry. Just another teen fortunate enough not to break any horror movie cliches to be the final girl or guy. Of course, Tommy Jarvis is a unique case. You gotta do something. Jason's alive. He killed my friend and now he's coming for me. Played by three different actors over the course of three films, it was originally planned for Jarvis to take Jason's mantle at the end of A New Beginning. But by part six, he was back to playing the hero, trying to rescue teens at Camp Crystal Lake from a reanimated Jason. He's been here once tonight. I think he'll come back. Until his death, Dr. Samuel Loomis, masterfully played by actor Donald Pleasance, served as a perfect counterpart to Michael Myers, lending a bit of an English gravitas and class to a franchise often considered seedy. In many ways, he was the ideal patient. He, he didn't talk, he didn't cry, he didn't even move. He just waited. He was a doctor, based in reason and logic, confronted with an illogical evil. And in Loomis's absence, audiences slowly witnessed Jamie Lee Curtis's transition from the final girl to the hardcore survivalist in the 2018 film. Meyer's backstory may be vague, but his antagonists are well drawn. Michael just had more to face, taking another round. Winner, Michael. Round three, abilities. It's pretty much a given that a bullet or a knife isn't going to stop either Michael or Jason in their tracks, but each has what Liam Neeson would call a certain set of skills ideally suited to their environment. Whereas Michael is subtle, quiet, and downright stealthy, Jason has no problem bursting through doors with brute force. It brings plenty of horrific tension to the Halloween films when Michael is stalking his victims, particularly the way director John Carpenter shot it, with Michael suddenly appearing in the background.
The holiday also gives him the right cover, given that everyone is wearing a mask. But it's hard to beat Jason's lack of, to put it gently, tact. He's also much more adept at appearing out of nowhere. The Michael Bay-produced reboot tried to offer an explanation that he moved through a series of underground tunnels. But just having him pop up where least expected is half of the fun of a Friday movie. Add that to an inventive use of everyday items for creative kills and super strength, and you have Jason's first win. Winner, Jason. Michael Myers 2, Jason 1. Round 4, Costume. From Freddy's ratty red and green sweater to My Bloody Valentine's coal miner getup, an iconic slasher is bound to have a trademark design. Who are you? What are you doing? A slasher's outfit becomes a part of their calling card, just as significant as their trademark weapon. So in this twisted, macabre fashion show, who wore it better? Michael certainly wore it first, a William Shatner mask spray-painted white with the hair teased out, but the rest of his outfit could be found at the nearest gas station. Though Jason didn't receive his hockey mask from one of his victims until part three, he was rarely seen without it. When he was, the rotting zombie underneath was just as scary. The mask even allowed a bit of levity in what would otherwise be considered a total gore fest. And then there are the upgrades that Jason X provided. They're plenty silly, but more inventive than just a simple random white mask. I'd say it got better. It's been modified. Oh, you think? We've got to hand this one to Mr. Voorhees. Winner, Jason. Michael and Jason have even the score at two apiece. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Round 5. Scares A solid horror franchise lives or dies by its scares. With recurring characters and decades worth of film reels, however, franchises have a tendency to lose their edge or, worse, dip into meta territory. At that point, it's as if they aren't even trying. Just going through the motions, on to the next splatter fest. What's the tipping point when you know it's Jump the Shark? Well, both franchises came out of the gate strong, even though Friday was essentially just a cash-in on Halloween's success. The latter of the two are the only films that still set out to frighten audiences. <laughs> Jason is just there to slice and dice. But going back to the basic premise of the films, Halloween has a more frightening idea. Well, I'll keep my doors locked. Thanks for telling me. Pure, unadulterated evil appearing in any town USA was a relatively new idea in the 70s when monsters generally came from space or some kind of outer threat. At its core, Friday is a simple revenge story, the sort we've seen a dozen times before. Sorry, creepy woodsmen, but we're much more scared of our own neighborhoods than some remote campsite. It was close, but the horror from Haddonfield edged it out at the end. Michael 3, Jason 2. Winner, Michael. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.